Okay, in today's lecture, we're going to be talking about the bipolar junction transistor. So here we have a cross section of a bipolar transistor. And from the cross section, you can see we start with the emitter, and then we go down vertically into the base, and then finally we make contact with the collector. The collector is uh, pin position is over here, uh, but it's uh, making an ohmic contact to this pink in region right here. You can see that bipolar transistors typically have a vertical construction. And indeed, if we start with a cross section from looking from the N region here, the N plus region, we see what makes the traditional construction of the bipolar junction transistor. Let's look in detail at this cross section. Starting from the top, we have an N plus plus region. Next, we have a P plus region. And finally, we have an N region. We essentially have two P injunctions, which would form diodes. And the one that we primarily care about One that we primarily care about, we essentially have two P injunctions forming diodes. We have an emitter. The center region is called the base, and the bottom region here is called the collector. Now the emitter base junction is going to be the most important for us. This is going to control the performance of the device when we use it appropriately. This transistor is called an NPN. You can see it's because it's a sandwich uh, of a P region surrounded by two N regions. So they call it an NPN transistor. We can also make a PNP transistor. Here we would start with a P plus heavily doped region, followed by an N plus lightly, lighter doped region, followed by a very lightly doped region. Again, we also have diodes. The heavy doped region is again called the emitter. The central region is called the base and the low doped region is called the collector. And again, the emitter base junction is what we're going to care about in terms of the control of the transistor primarily. So let's look at the operation of the NPN and PN transistors. First, let's go ahead and relabel the regions. Here you can see that I've labeled the NPN starting with the emitter on the bottom the base above it and the collector above that. And for the PNP, I've started with the emitter at the top, the base just below that. And oops, I've made a mistake in the labeling there. The collector should be at the bottom. Now I've put the emitter at the bottom for the NPN because the primary carrier is an electron. So that's going to be coming from the lowest potential. And for the PNP, the primary carrier is going to be a hole. So that's going to be coming from the highest potential. Now, operation centers around the collector to base junction, CBJ, and emitter to base junction. And this is true for both the NPN and the PNP. What's going to dictate the operation at these junctions is their bias voltage, the collector to base voltage, VCB and the base to emitter voltage, VBE, on the NPN. And on the PNP, it will be the base to collector voltage, VBC. And on the emitter to base junction, it will be VEB. Note that we simply reverse the subscripts when we're talking about the PNP, and we can talk about everything qualitatively the same as we would for the NPN. So let's look at our schematic symbols. We don't typically draw this cross section when we're analyzing the circuit. We draw a schematic symbol, a schematic symbol for our NPN.
with something like this. We have our base. The emitter is in the direction of the arrow coming from the base. The collector is the unlabeled terminal. And for our PNP, we have the arrow going between the emitter and base junctions. And finally, our collector is the unlabeled unlabeled junction. Operation of the BJT is dictated by the biasing of the PN junctions. We expect to see operation depending upon whether the junction is forward biased or reverse biased. Here you can see I've labeled forward bias as FB and reverse bias as RB. When both junctions are reverse biased, or both are RB, this is known as cutoff. And cutoff is known as a state where no current flows. If we were using the device as a switch, this would be the off state. When both junctions are forward biased, we're in saturation. And this is a state where we might use the device as a resistance that's proportional to the control voltages. When the emitter base junction is forward biased and the collector base junction, junction is reverse biased, in other words, when the emitter has a lower potential than the base and the base has a lower potential than the collector, we're in what's called the forward active region. Sometimes labeled as far. This makes a good amplifier. Finally, we can operate with the emitter base junction reversed and the collector to base junction forward biased. This is the reverse active region. And this would be a bad amplifier. Reverse active isn't commonly used. Effectively, what we're doing is using the collector as the emitter and the emitter as the collector in this region of operation. And we don't like to do this because the collector hasn't been doped as heavily as the emitter. The transistor doesn't perform as well in the reverse direction, although it will still perform as a transistor in that direction. All right, we're going to stop the video for now and we will start with a new video next.